Welcome, Nicholas and JD. How much fun is this? Check out your new book, Two by Two. Yeah. And how lovely that both of you are here, the two of you. <laughs> We're sitting two by two. You are, and I'm just one by one yeah. over here. Um, I want to talk to you about how you came together to collaborate on this project. JD? Yeah, well, um, for me, it was kind of a call out of the, out of the blue from my manager, and he said... Uh, you know, Nicholas Sparks, he wants you to write a song for him. And I was on the road, and I remember, like, I took the phone, and I was like, you know, I paused for a minute, and I was like, I, I brought the phone back, and I was like, man, are you the Nicholas Sparks? Like, the, the, the guy the guy I'm Nicholas thinking about? Sparks? Yeah, right, right. And, uh, and, you know, after a little bit of convincing, um, he told me that basically uh, Nicholas and his team had been reviewing music and looking for for a songwriter to write a song for to kind of accompany this book as a kind of companion or soundtrack to the novel and uh, I was blown away by the just the chance to do it and excited to to try this idea of crossing mediums like this so how did you find JD um, process of uh, research you know, my, I work with a lot of people and and they went through and they found some they, they made phone calls who's who's great, who's talented, who do you think you can do this? And then we were given a list and we listened to the music and little by little we kind of weaned it and willowed it down to JD and we made the phone call. Well, it's a great pairing. Um, I got the book, which comes out tomorrow, by the way, October 4th. I got it on Friday and spent the entire weekend reading it cover to cover. I couldn't put it down. Thank you. Uh, almost 500 pages in under 48 hours. Thank you very much. Um, and I am sure I will not be the only one who picks up this book and basically reads it in one sitting. Well, I hope so. I mean, I hope pe most people at least... I would love most people to read it, of course, but however people want to read it, if they want to read it fast, they want to read it slow, uh, I, I'm fine with that. I think it's really fascinating and wonderful that this book is coming out almost 20 years to the day after The Notebook. Yeah. Hashtag it, 20 years of sparks, guys. Right. I, you know, I still remember... Uh, writing the notebook and sitting in my kitchen and the computer and typing away and wondering if anyone's, if, if all of this is pointless, right? I was working a job at that time, so I was writing in the evenings. And, you know, at that time you're filled with hopes and dreams, but you, you really can't expect what, what has happened since then. I mean, I liked the story, but I didn't know, A, whether anyone else would, and B, more importantly, whether... I could actually write it well, and you know I've just been very fortunate, and uh, can't thank people enough for following me for the last 20 years. Hard to believe. Yeah, crazy. but again, it, but it's also easy to believe. I mean that that story is. It's, it's a little iconic. This, I mean, you kind of yeah. know most people are f somewhat familiar with the story, primarily I think because of the film, but. Uh, Hey, I'll take it however it's, it comes. It's genre defining, really. It is. Um, and I have, I think, as a result of that book, always thought of you as this, as the romance novelist. But this book is more about family, and it's actually about the falling apart of a, of a relationship. It's about a lot of things. You know, in, in the end, what I try to do is I, after 20 books, I'm always striving to be original. So in my previous novel, See Me, you know, that was really. Um, Love and Danger. It was a it was a love story that almost evolved into a thriller, and it did evolve into a thriller. And that was my last novel. So for this one, I wanted to explore a couple of different concepts. I wanted I wanted more of a family story, but really I wanted the story of a father and daughter, and a young daughter and a guy who comes to terms with how do you do this? How do you be the father that you know you can be? when you're suddenly thrust into this role. It's about a guy who becomes Mr. Mom. And then I also wanted to explore on a larger theme this, this idea that we're not meant to march through, through life alone. And, you know, toward the, and, and I think that's really important. I'm not saying that you have to have one person, but as we face the joys and struggles of life, you know, we, we might walk part of our journey with uh, our mom or our dad or our sibling or the one we love or our child. And especially when things are really hard, if you can find someone like that, it helps you make it along this journey. And that's what I wanted to explore. It's the entire theme of the book. And of course, that's what I spoke with JD about when he was writing the song. And I said, this is really what I want to capture. And I thought the way he went about it, uh, kind of being vague about the uh, who it 
who the two by two actually is. Why don't you yeah. talk about that? Yeah, well, um, so after hearing about the two by two story um, and that, that idea that we're kind of interdependent with someone throughout our lives or we need someone or should have someone, um, the idea with the song was to, to write it in a way that, um, you know, whatever your two by two story is, you could connect with it, you know, so that when you're listening to it, you could think of that person in your own life rather than be specific necessarily to father daughter only kind of relationship. So it kind of it comes at it from that angle where anybody um, listening could maybe find their own story in it. Was the book completed before you started uh, writing the song? No, but he knew the story. And he, we got on the phone, and he was actually knew the end of the story probably before my agent, before my editor. He was one of the few people who actually knew it. And I said, here are the emotions that are going through, and, and here's the, the theme that I'm trying to explore, and here's the title. And yeah, I walked him through some of the events that would happen, and, and so he knew it would be a somewhat emotional book. So I said, hey, can you write a song that not only captures the theme, but also captures the emotional journey, you know, in, in, a, in a different medium, in song. You know, I've had different mediums. You know, I've had lots of films adapted, but this is really a, a lot of fun to say, all right, let's take what I try to do, the emotion and the theme, and, and let's, uh, let's find someone extraordinary to put it into song. This is your 20th book in 20 years. Yeah. Why music for this one? It felt right. It felt right to me. It was something as a way to say thank you to the readers that have followed me or read me for the past uh, 20 years, those who've supported my career over time. And I just think it's a really neat concept to explore the same feelings in different mediums. You, know, you can enjoy the Lion King cartoon I did with my kids, but then you can go to Broadway and experience it in a different medium. And it's kind of the same but it's it's different and it's and it's wonderful and that's essentially what I was trying to do is you can enjoy a novel you can enjoy a movie based on my novel but now let's try to enjoy it in song well I'm so glad you brought up Broadway I knew that that was your softball (laughs) (laughs) Um, because every Broadway musical has a book writer and it has a lyricist uh, and uh, music writer, and I am curious as to whether the two of you have talked about taking your skills and actually turning this into a stage show or collaborating on something that might become uh, a project for the stage. Haven't gotten there, uh, and I'm not close to it. You know, we're working on the notebook for Broadway, so we're still doing all of that, and we'll see where that eventually leads. Tell me everything about that right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, there's not much to tell. You know, working with another producer and finalizing the, uh, the 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 contracts, so to speak. They're very complex. Who's and writing the music? We're not even there yet. Who's going to star in it? We are not there yet. <laughs> what theater is it going to be in? <laughs> I, All right, we I'll, don't I'll let you off the hook. But I do have something, you know, they said one of the, the, the neat things and why they think that the notebook might work so well is that one of the things you really have to have uh, for a good lasting Broadway show is it's got to have an uplifting message at the end, mm. right? It's got to have a, this sense of, of hope. And, you know, I think the notebook is a wonderful fit for that. All right. I'll let, you've, dod- you've dodged the question about the two-by-two two I, th- I thought it was a pretty effective dodge. What do you think? Yeah, it was effective, I, although I, I will tell you, Nick, I'm on board whenever you want to go ahead and do that. Do the two-by-two two for Broadway. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, J.D., I want to ask you about uh, writing for, um, for different uh, concepts. So you got this sort of, uh, you got this call. We want you to write this song for this book. You've collaborated with other with brands before um, and written for an airline and a car commercial commercial and your songs have been featured in uh, other projects beyond just your own albums sure. plus you have performed live all over the place with Dave Matthews and Kelly Clarkson and just toured with all these huge huge uh, acts I'm curious as to how the songwriting process differs when you're writing on assignment versus when you're writing kind of you know, in your proverbial basement with your right. guitar and your emotions. Right. Well, it can, it can be different. A lot of those projects were, um, you know, commercials or um, opportunities where they were saying, like, okay, let's use this existing music for for a commercial or something like that, which is a little easier because it's already done. Um, with uh, but some of the ad stuff um, is, is songs you're writing. They call it writing to brief. So, um, you know, you get uh, maybe a couple lines of something they're looking for, like a, a upbeat song with. 
um, the word sunshine in it or something like that, you know, and you're like, okay, I got to figure out and, you know, turn this song around in 48 hours or something, you know, kind of quick. Um, and so, but I actually, I really like doing, uh, writing for, for a purpose outside of my own experience because it, it lets me get outside of my own experience. You know what I mean? So, um, to, to have this story and to, to hear, you know, all the themes that Nick was, was sharing with me, um, to take that and then try to connect with it personally and then create, you know, art or song out of it um, is really exciting, you know, and there's, there's a different kind of pressure, I would say a heavier pressure, because if I don't write the song that only I know about, it just doesn't get written, but when, you know, when I've got to write the song for Nicholas Sparks' book, and I've, I've actually said this before, there's a, there was a serious responsibility that I felt when, with this project, because there are many, many talented songwriters and people who could do this, and so to be the one to get this, this shot, um, you know, has a real weight to it, so I spent a lot of time really trying to to find the right the right moment. You knew right that it was going to be JD before you heard the final song, or were there other artists who wrote songs called Two by Two that you auditioned for this? No, I knew it was gonna be JD. I, I, I didn't want to share my story with everybody prior to the final, you know, prior to the book release. So I knew it was gonna be JD, and it was just a matter of, hey, here's what we're trying to do, here's, here's the emotions, here's the theme. Um, talk to me when you get done. And so he sent over a, a rough copy, you know, I guess draft number one. What do you call music? Oh, like demo. Demo yeah. number mm -hmm. one. So demo number one. He sent that, and then I sent him back notes, which was very odd for me because I don't do notes on music. I don't know how to talk to musicians. And then who and am I to tell... Anyway. And then who <laughs> am I to tell him about music, right? I mean, I mean, I'm... I, my depth of knowledge is one one hundredth of what his is. This is his profession. And so I felt very odd giving notes or saying, hey, here's my, here's my, uh, here's my biggest thought. But then you invited him to give you notes on the book, right? No. Well, and I, I, was, I was wildly offended as well by the... No, I'm just kidding. No. Some collaboration this well, is. No, honestly, you know, Nicholas's notes were... The way he presented it was very tactful. I mean, it wasn't like he was like, that's all wrong or anything like that. He just kind of, like, guided me in the right direction. I was happy to get him. Um, it was kind of... That first draft was a shot in the dark. I mean, I had talked to him, got a lot of stuff written down. I, it was over the phone. We were talking through everything, and I'm, I have this journal, and I was, like, writing everything frantically and then trying to boil it down. And so um, it was good to get the feedback rather than him just say, okay, we're good to go. At least I knew now exactly what to do to get it you know, in the, in the ballpark a little closer. And so, um, so I went back to the drawing board and, and took his notes and um, draft two was, was the one. And in addition to the, this song, there's a, a whole EP that's, uh, being a, that's available for free to fans of yours. I don't think it even requires the purchase of the book. No, but I mean, I, you can download this music for free starting tomorrow, the same day that the novel is released. And I, and I, think, it's, I think that's a great thing. I mean, it's JD's, very generous. Well, and JD's a great, uh, a gr I think people will love the music. He's phenomenal at what he does. I think that also Thank when you. people hear those songs, which are very gut-wrenching, I had to stop listening to them after I put my mascara on for the, the interview because I didn't want to oh, ruin it all. Um, but I think they'll inspire people to seek out uh, the book. And the three other songs that are on the EP are songs that you had written previously, right? Right. They're um, one, one song from each of my last three records. So, uh, uh, but they've been either remixed, remastered, or... Right. So one's kind of a... Uh, we re-recorded some parts and changed it up, kind of a special version just for the, for the soundtrack, and then the other two are remastered. Yeah. Have you seen the effects of the exposure of this project yet in terms of your visibility? Yeah, I mean, just... You know, just being able to say that I know this guy has uh, opened some doors and, and been a great thing, and um, and I'm hoping that it you know continues to offer opportunity. It's been great, and I, I you know I said this um, earlier to to Nicholas, but I think it speaks vol. You know, Nicholas Sparks could work with anybody. I think it speaks volumes that he chose an unknown to help bring along. You know, to let me come along for the ride rather than just get one of the old seasoned pros. So it was really it's a nice thing and a, a generous thing that I'm grateful for to be a part of this. How familiar with his work were you before this? And once you got the assignment, sure. how much did you go back and dig into the material? Yeah, good question. Uh, so I, I had I knew Nicholas Sparks, I knew the name, and I had seen the Notebook, the and movie. so so yeah. But um, immediately after that call, I I, I kind of dove in. So I watched uh, another movie right away, The Best of Me. Um, I read See Me and The Choice, 
and three weeks with my brother, which is great because it kind of gave me a little bit of insight into to Nicholas's life. And um, so kind of immediately started doing my homework and uh, was pleasantly surprised I'm a fan. So it's great. It's excellent. It sounds like it's sort of a mutual adoration society. He did great work, and that's all you can ask when you work with people. You, you, you want to work with people who are passionate about uh, what they do, and they're good at what they do, but you also want them to be passionate on the specific project that, mm -hmm. that you would like. And I was, I was really happy that, uh, that he was willing to take a shot. Yeah. I want to go back into the text of the book. Um, the two by two of the title refers to a few different things. It refers to a song that the father and daughter discover together. It refers to a book that the little girl loves. And there are several different pairings of people within the book that are very important to each other. Absolutely. Um, I want to know, I know that you have several children, um, and I want to know whether there was one in particular that inspired these stories, how much of it came straight from your imagination, how many of the anecdotes came from your real life. Oh, sure. I mean, look, uh, the, the birth of your first child, you know, some of those feelings that I had or that are described in the book, that's, you know, hey, look, there's, there's some hints of autobiographical stuff. And, of course, I have a couple of daughters, and, and the way you feel about your daughters and, you know... Which one's your favorite? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so certainly there, and then just the fears of uh, the fears of being a uh, a good enough father. What does that mean? You know, if you work so much that you don't see your kids enough, are you still good enough? And that that fear that I think uh, people with children sometimes worry about: it, Am I enough? And so really, uh, some of these feelings they really drive Russ as he moves through his own journey. As a writer. Were you working at home and able to take part in the sort of, as you called it, Mr. Mom uh, duties, the way that uh, an office oh, yeah. job wouldn't have allowed you? Oh, yeah. I did all sorts of things. I cook. I coached. I hung with the kids. I played Barbies. Oh, I did it all. Sure. In fact, um, for my uh, birthday one year, and it was really one of my favorite birthday parties ever, my kids, I think they must have been... 10 and 11 at the time, my three youngest kids, they spent an entire morning uh, digging toys out of the attic things, and they did a Toy Story birthday theme for me. Because, you know, they had uh, you know, Mr. Potato Head, and they had a Woody, and they had a Buzz, <laughs> and, and they set it up like one of the videos uh, that Andy would play at the beginning with the railroad, and they must have spent hours up there decorating the room so that it would look like Andy's on the video. And it was awesome. I just love that that kind of uh, imagination and um, and just the effort they put in. It, it, it really is among the most meaningful birthdays I've ever had. Well, just the way you light up when you talk about your yeah. kids, it's clear that the character of Russ and the love he has for his daughter, that that was not a complete invention. No, of course not. Um, the, and you the, know, he's about to have a baby. Are you really? I am, yeah. Actually, this is kind of crazy how this has all unraveled because um, we had just found out that we were going to have a baby uh, when I got that phone call about working with Nicholas. And um, I'm, you know, musicians are, if you're not famous, you're poor. So <laughs> I've been, I was kind of freaking out about uh, my career and this job choice that I was on and then trying to feed a baby and, and everything, keep another mouth uh, fed, um, food on the table. But, um, so I got the call from Nicholas and uh, was very excited because this would be a way to help out a career and get the music out there a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And um, and then a little after that, we found out that I was going to be having a girl. Um, and so when Nicholas and I are talking on the phone about the stories, like, you know, it's the core of the stories of father and his daughter. And we get to the end, and he's like, do you think you could, you know, is this something you could be inspired to write about? And I was like, I kind of laughed. I was like, yeah, this is... This is like the time for me to write this song. It's like yeah. right up my alley, perfect. And um, and it, it's just a lot of little coincidences with this whole collaboration have been awesome. The, tomorrow is uh, our uh, second year wedding anniversary. It's the same day as the book comes out, and our baby will be due the end of the month. So it's a real exciting kind of time for, for us. So, yeah, thanks. So it's your wedding anniversary. It's your 20-year anniversary of releasing one of the biggest books in the history of literature um, since the Bible. 
<laughs> um, and uh, and then this this collaborative uh, project is coming out. I know that you're doing some signings and appearances. Where can people find you online to get more information about those? Certainly, uh, NicholasSparks.com. That's probably one. Uh, Grand Central Publishing would have information on that as well. I'm sure JD has it posted. My social media covers it as well. And Nicholas Sparks at Instagram, face. It's just I my believe name. two I'm by two music.com is where you find uh, the EP. Yeah, you can sign up there and get the music. It'll be in your inbox tomorrow. Great. We're going to take some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, Hello. You have written two of my favorite all-time love stories, which is The Notebook and The Walk to Remember. Do you have any um, of your favorites from your novels um, that you take away today? Favorite? Favorite novels that you've written. You know, the, that I've written, yeah. I like them all. I mean, I think that, you know, I have a great fondness for The Notebook, right, because it was the first one and it launched my career. But I could say, you know, two by two, you know, that was an incredibly complex. It's my longest novel to date. And uh, and, and it was, and there's a there's some, the, the, the stuff about him and his kids, you know, it's something very near and dear to me. So in some ways, that was even more emotional for me to write. So it's almost impossible for me to pick one specific book. I mean, if you say, hey, A Walk to Remember, that was really inspired by my sister, right? Uh, and her battle with cancer. Well, Message in a Bottle was inspired by my father after the death of my mother. So how do you pick between, well, I like my sister more than my dad. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like that, and you're like, well, I kind of like them both, right? And, you know, Dear John, you know, th that had roots in my cousin's story. It's things along those lines. And then, of course, the last song, you know, that was for my daughters had asked for a teenage love story, and so that was a specific request from them. And so they all have their own deep meanings. You mentioned, you just mentioned six of your books in that answer. Can you name the other 14? <laughs> yeah, I know the books I've written. I can even name them in order. I, want, I, I, want, I want you to do it. Can you really no, do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. What are we waiting for? Wow. I think wow. we have questions. Okay, uh, you have the notebook. You have message in a bottle. You have a walk to remember. You have the rescue. You have a bend in the road. You have nights in Rodanthe. You have the guardian. You have the wedding. You have three weeks with my brother. You have true believer. That's you ten. have at first sight. You have, do, really? All right. I think I he's got you. it. <laughs> harsh. That was harsh. Lord. Look, I asked the tough questions. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. Thanks. So this question is for you, Nicholas. I'm also a writer and a professional journalist. What inspires me to write is finding stories and uncovering the truth and build a nice narrative. For you, ultimately, as an individual, what inspires you to write? In the end, I think what inspires me most is simply the challenge of doing it well. Uh, I've just been one of these guys who likes challenges. Like when I started running track, in high school, I didn't just want to run track. I said, gee, I wonder how good I could be, right? And I ended up being having a modicum of talent, and I get a scholarship. And so it's kind of like that. It's like, I wonder if I can write a story that's different than anything I've ever done before, or a novel that will resonate longer than The Notebook, right? And that's what I try to do. And it's just really for the sake of a challenge, and that's kind of what motivates me. And then what happens is the idea for a story begins to germinate. And it's always a really small idea. It might be a theme. I want to explore family or uh, love and danger, whatever the theme is. Sometimes it's character, you know, the longest ride. Boy, I heard Ira's voice. I'm, I'm really going to explore that. Sometimes it might be plot. An, a, an idea for a good story just comes to me. So, and then, then from that one little idea, you build on a whole bunch of ideas before I start writing. So it's the, it's just, I'm wired to like challenges, and then I kind of get hit with the idea that, okay, hey, something's coming together, and then when it does, I feel like I gotta put it down on paper. I think this is a good opportunity to also just mention your philanthropy, because I know, speaking of your, your past as a, a track star, um, you donated a huge amount of money to, to the program that where you learned and 
trained as a runner. And sure. that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how you've given back. So um, we are r running a little short on time, but I want to at least acknowledge Thanks. and sort of thank you on behalf of everyone who cares thank about you. giving back. Thank you. We have time for one more question, and then we'll do the, the music. All right. Hello. My question is for Nicholas. I wanted to know, out of all the stories you, that you have written already, was there any story that you wish you could go back and change the outcome? Oh, what a good, um, what a, what a good question. Uh, yeah, I always think that I, I would go back and, and change. You know, I, when I sit where I am now, and I, and I can say in all honesty that I did not have the technical ability as a writer 20 years ago to have written two by two. I just, 20 years ago, I, I didn't have it, I didn't have the skill or the, and it's really skill, the technical expertise necessary. So I go back and so that, that automatically triggers. Gee, I wonder if the notebook way back when was any good, right? So then I'll go back and I'll reread the notebook and you know, for the most part, I'm very satisfied with the stories and there's not much in them that I would ever change at all. Well, I want to thank you both for being here so much. Yes, um, thanks for having me. Everybody us. pick up 2 by 2 It's in stores everywhere tomorrow. You can go to 2 by 2 musiccom to pick up the songs, whether or not you buy the book, but hopefully if you get the music first, it'll just inspire you to get the book. And I predict that once you buy that book, you'll be like me and read the whole thing without putting it down, even though it is quite a hefty tome. It is worth... <laughs> It's worth every page and every minute you spend on it. So thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. it.